This is the Rolex Explorer in 36 millimeters, and this is it in 40 mil. Today, we're gonna talk about the differences between these two, and there's actually quite a lot of differences between them, which one might be right for you, and which one I'd buy after being hands-on with both of these. Let's get into it. If you're new here, Hi, my name is Brittany, and this channel is just completely dedicated to the beauty and awesomeness of timepieces. One thing I have to say before we get into it is that I have these watches on loan from my gorgeous, fabulous friend Mark at Mr. Watch Addict on Instagram. He might just have one of the most robust modern Explorer collections, so he's let me borrow the Explorer 36, 39 Mark II, the 40, and his Explorer II. So I was thinking about making a video that's the ultimate explorer guide, or maybe comparing the 39 and the 40 millimeters. I don't know. Do you want to see any of those videos? Any explorer content you want to see? Let me know. I can make it happen. Mark, thank you so, so much for letting me borrow these. And let's get looking at these two. So the Explorer 36 and 40 represent the current catalog stainless steel variations you can buy. So if you went into the AD and you asked to see an Explorer, these would be your two options. Exhibition only. <laughs> looking at the specifications and the actual capability of these watches, they are exactly the same. They are both stainless steel Rolex professional models, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire glass, and they both house the same movement, the COSC certified caliber 3230 with 70 hours of power reserve. From a technicality standpoint, what these watches are made for, they're exactly the same, but it's in the wearing experience and proportions that make these miles different. Sometimes I feel like such a weenie in the watch space, freaking out about four millimeters. I know it sounds small, but look at these. Freaking look at how big of a difference four millimeters makes. Oh, I need to get out more. <laughs> So let's start with the 36 millimeter variation. My trusty calipers measure this at 35.5 millimeters case diameter, a thickness of 11.5 mil, and a lug to lug of 43 millimeters. Now I found the 35.5 millimeter case diameter almost shocking. I've made videos in the past about Rolex sizing on their website versus the actual sizing, but I think to a lot of people interested in this watch, there's a big difference between 36 mil and 35.5 mil. If you thought I could have a cow about four millimeters, wait till you see what I can do with 0.5 mil. <laughs> but this sizing does actually explain why I like it so much. So here this one is on my five and a half inch wrist versus my husband's seven inch wrist. This is something I don't say very often. I actually think the 36 millimeter looks better on me. It's a close call. It looks pretty good on both of us, but definitely a small wrist friendly size. Something to note here, and it's gonna sound small and petty, but it makes a huge difference. The taper on this is extreme. If you compare the 40 millimeter and the 36 millimeter clasp, look how wee the 36 mil is. So it tapers down from 19 millimeters all the way down to 14 mil with the clasp measuring 16.2 millimeters in width. For reference, the 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual tapers from 20 mil down to 15.6 with a clasp width of 18 millimeters. What I'm trying to say with all these numbers is you can feel the heavy taper on the 36 millimeter Explorer and it does make it feel almost daintier than say the 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual. Now my calipers measure the larger variation at 39.6 millimeters in case diameter, a thickness of 11.6 mil, and a lug to lug of 46.5 millimeters. Just looking at the dial proportions, you can definitely see the difference between them, with the 36 millimeters being that little bit more compact, tight, and truer to explorer heritage. The 40 mil definitely feels that little bit more spread out, the proportions feel more modern. This feels like what most men would opt for. Here's this one on my wrist versus my husband's wrist. I don't like these proportions as much on me, but it is just right on his seven inch wrist. One thing to note with the 40 millimeter variation is that it has a 21 millimeter lug width, which kind of sucks for strap options. So that's just something to keep in mind and to know if you're looking into buying this. Something interesting about the Explorer 40 is that it kind of feels like Rolex fixing a mistake and reissuing a discontinued watch isn't something they do very often. So in 2010, Rolex discontinued the reference 114270, the 36 millimeter Explorer, and introduced the 39. In 2016, the 39 millimeter then had some slight modifications, you know, 
Rolex minuscule changes. And then in 2021, they discontinued the 39 millimeters and it was replaced with this watch, the 124270. And I kind of thought that this was it. It would be the 36 millimeters or nothing for the foreseeable future, which a lot of people were disappointed about. 39 millimeters is kind of that sweet spot for most collectors. And then, completely out of the blue, at Watches and Wonders 2023, Rolex released a 39 millimeter variation. I think they had to make it 40 millimeters so it didn't out and out look like they were walking back on that decision. But I think it makes a lot of sense business wise. So the Explorer really represents the sporty, go-anywhere-do-anything watch of the Rolex catalog. It's not the best at any one thing, but it's kind of good at everything. It's an all-rounder. I feel like you could wear this with jeans and a t-shirt, you could wear this with a suit to work, 100 meters of water resistance, so you could wear this to the beach or surfing. This is exactly my kind of watch. Versatile watches, they're the hero pieces of any collection. So I would recommend the 36 millimeters, or should I say 35.5 mil variation for someone with a wrist size of six and a half inches or under, or someone who prefers more classical watch sizing, and the 40 millimeter for someone with a six and a half inch wrist size or larger, or if you prefer larger, more modern watch sizing. As always, my recommendation is always to try it on first where possible. That's always the tricky part. If you're interested in one of these, Explorers are becoming more available at the authorized dealers again. I really hope you get the call soon. Pop into the AD, make sure they know you're still waiting on one of these. If you follow my channel, you already know what I'm gonna say. If it was me and my money, it'd be the 36 millimeters all day long. I prefer the sizing on my wrist and the dial proportions. In fact, having these in has only convinced me that I need to add an explorer to my collection. For me, it's always been that watch that I couldn't justify since I have the 34 millimeter Oyster Perpetual. I just thought they were too similar, especially having it in the black dial. I just always thought, blah, they're too close. I can't do it. And I know the differences can feel small, but there's actually a lot more to it. Comparing my Oyster Perpetual 34 and the modern 36 millimeter Explorer, it's the sunburst dial versus the flat black lacquer dial, baton hands versus Mercedes hands, the 369 and the triangle at 12, the professional clasp, and just the overall sportiness of the Explorer. I have successfully managed to convince myself that I need both. <laughs> Plus, if Mark can justify having all these explorers, surely I can justify adding the explorer. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. So thank you, Mark, for feeding my watch disease. Sometimes I think I have a problem with buying watches that are all almost the same as each other. And that's why I could use a logic or science course from today's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that can teach you new skills or help you brush up on old skills. I've been trying to develop more professionally, running this YouTube channel. So one of my favorite courses is in data analysis where I've learned to analyze continuous variables, how to filter data and make comparisons in a fun, interactive way. But of course they have so much more than just that. They have courses in math, data, computer science, statistics, finance, and a brand new course that I've just started, how LLMs or large language models work to help me navigate the changing tech world and AI and all that new scary stuff. They're all about learning through doing. It's, it's not sitting through some boring lectures. It is hands-on and the best way to learn. Whether you'd like to develop more professionally or learn something new for fun, Brilliant is the one. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for 30 days, go click that link in my description. The first 200 people who go click can also get 20% off an annual subscription. Click that link, give it a go, and let's thank the fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful Pope Tier patrons. Hello guys, it's me, Willow, the cat, and I'd like to thank all of Brit's Pope Tier patrons. I personally think that they're the best. I especially wanted to thank newest Pope Tier patron, Bordy. Yay! Thank you all for supporting Brit's channel. All patrons are the best, but special best shout out to the Pope Tier patrons.